This is question four from paper 4-1 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International and this is the mechanics paper. Up the top right of the screen you'll find a card that will bring you to the, my playlist that has all my solutions for the other questions in this paper. And below the video you'll find a link to a, an image of this question so you can try it before looking at this solution. This question provides us this image and it also tells us that this ring here weighs or has mass 0.1 kilograms and uh, tells us the rod is fixed it's not going to move but it's also rough so there is resistance on it and it tells us the coefficient of resistance in this uh, for this rod and ring is going to be 0 0.8 that's going to be quite important lots of students try this question forget this but you should you should notice that they're never going to give you information at this level that you're not going to use okay so uh, if they've given you some information and you haven't used it, you've probably gone wrong somewhere. Maybe, maybe the odd question that's possible. And so we have this force pulling down this direction 30 degrees from the rod, and that's T. And uh, basically they want us to find what's the greatest value of T. How big, how much can we pull here before this moves? Because there's resistance. This is gonna resist um, a very slight push or pull, or in this case pull. And so what's the biggest number that we can do that? Right, so how do we do this? We, let's break this up first. This, a force this direction is fairly useless to us. We like everything in 90 degrees um, and we've, we've decided up and down, left and right is, is where we wanna go, which is at this level is all, we, all we're gonna do. So let's break this guy up. Instead of this force, let's uh, put a force out this way and a force this way. We can break them into two forces. So this one, uh, again, this is just from a triangle. That's 30, this, is, uh, this length is t, so what length is this? It's sine 30 is equal to this divided by t. Rearrange that, we get um, the up down one. This one here, it's the same height, even though it's over here. This one here will be t sine 30. And this one here will be t cosine 30. So they're, uh, they're, they're, they're the two forces from that tension T. There will be another force, uh, a little small one here, we'll put that in as 1. That's 10 multiplied by 0 0.1, the mass. That's the force from the mass. And then uh, most students don't write this one. It's okay not to write this one. You're not going to lose any marks. If, if this force is coming down, there has to be something matching it when the ring is pushing back against the rod. And that's just these two added together. They have to equal. Because the ring's not going anywhere. This is rigid. Uh, so that'd be, let me just write it as 1 plus t sine 30. I'm squeezing that in, apologies there. And there's one more force, the resistance, going this way. Let's call that F for now. And if the ring's not moving, they're asking us to find t such that it's not moving. All these must add up. So I already talked about the up and the down, they have to match. Um, so really now we've just got that this has to match this. So we've got... F is equal to T cosine 30. That's all, that's all, that'll, that'll resolve this question. But there's a few things we don't know. We don't know F. So is there anything else we can find about F? F is equal to the coefficient multiplied by, we call this, sometimes we use N or sometimes R, the normal. Basically how much, uh, what's the full weight of the object? How much force is acting down or up? It's fine in this case. So this is 0 0.8, and the total force in uh, this direction is 1 plus t sine 30. Sine 30 is a half, so I'll just put that in as a half. And so that's f. Um, yeah, I, I won't bother multiply that out anymore. That's f. And um, where is, oh, here's the other side. This side is t cosine. So let's just put all that in now. t cosine 30. Cosine 30 is square root of 3 divided by 2. Right, look, let's look what we have here. We have an equation. There's only one thing I don't know, t. So I can just play around with this until we find what t is. So we'll have t, we'll get multiplied into a square root of 3 over 2. And on this side, what's multiplying the t? A half and 0 0.8. So that's, and when we bring it over, it become minus 0 0.4. A half times 0 0.8. And left on the other side would be just 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Let's just divide this bracket across here. You know, let's switch them around. I think we're all able to do that. Uh, 0 
divided by this bracket, square root of 3 over 2 minus 0 0.4. And we put that into a calculator, I've already done that out, and three significant figures will give 1.72. Now what are we working out here? We're working out force, um, which is newtons. T was the amount of force going this way. Don't forget um, your, your units at the end. We, I, I find it's good, reread the question, find out, wait, what am I answering? I'm answering find the greatest value of t, what's t, usually they'll say find the force t, but in this case, finding t, have a look up and it says tn, make sure to put your units in, you will lose a mark. Okay, for part b, they ask us to find the acceleration of the ring when t equals 3. You know, let's rub this out and uh, we'll, we'll draw a new picture again, uh, just so we can see the slight differences. It's going to be fairly, I could reuse this, you wouldn't have to do this in the exam. We still need the coefficient here. I'll leave the old picture and we'll draw a new one again. We have the ring here. There's going to be a force coming down this way, three this time, and that's uh, at, at 30 degrees though. <coughs> Apologies. And um, let's see, we're going to break this up into two forces. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and put one here. That'll be three cosine 30, just like it was here. Another one here, which is three sine 30. That's just uh, 3 over 2, really. There's going to be the gravity force again, which is 1. Uh, both of those, they, they need a force to counteract it because we're not moving down. This is rigid, so it must be 0 overall. So I'll just put in 1 uh, plus 3 over 2. Plus 3 over 2. 1 plus 3 over 2 is just 5 over 2. So I'll just put that in. And uh, then we'll have the resistance force. So that's F. It's a different force though, because remember the resistance is equal, depends on the weight of the object, depends on the total force pushing it into the ground. Think of it in real life. If you're barely touching something, you can run smoothly, but if you push hard into it, that friction becomes a lot harder. So it's going to be a new one each time. So let's find out what it is. F is equal, uh, sorry, F is equal 0.8 multiplied by the total force, which is 5 over 2, which uh, I guess is equal to 2. 5 times uh, 0 0.8 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Put it on a calculator, double check that. So let me just put it in here then, 2. Okay, we want to know the total acceleration. So really, what for? Because acceleration would be F is equal MA. We know what M is. We want A, so I need the force. What's the total force moving? I guess it'll be this direction. And that will be uh, three multiplied by square root of three over two minus two. See where I'm getting this? This is the total F of the system, uh, the horizontal F anyway. We have three cosine 30, that's three multiplied by cosine 30, and then this is, put, this is going the opposite direction, so we'll have minus 2. And uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. I, I can put that into a calculator now, but I'll do it at the end. So f is equal to this, but it's also equal to 0 0.1 times a. Just rearrange it. a must equal 3 times square root of 3 over 2 minus 2 divided by 0 0.1. Put, again, put that in a calculator, and you will get... 5.98 and that's meters per second um, squared or yeah per second squared or meters multiplied by seconds to the minus two either way put some units there you could have it like I wrote or you could have meters over seconds squared either either is fine all right I think that uh, answers that question if you have if you're not sure of why I put anything in Put, them in, put a question in the comments below, I'll do my best to answer. If you see a mistake I made, let me know, I'll, I'll try and fix it. I don't want other people doing the same mistake I'm doing. Alright, thanks for watching, have a great day.